going to talk about quality child care spaces. Quality child care spaces. I use a tool when I go into child care programs working with centers um, to measure quality. And what I use is the Early Childhood Environmental Rating Scale. This is the tool that I use, Early Childhood. And we call this Eckers in the child care world. So I have people who have said that they don't like this tool, but I think um, it does a very good job of measuring quality in child care. So that is the tool that I use, and I'm going to show it again since I have somebody else online. It is the Early Childhood Environmental Rating Scale. So this is what I use um, when I go into centers to measure the quality of their center. Now, is it, is it an exact science? No. Um, but it gives a very good guide um, for what you should be looking for and what you should be doing in your child care program to provide quality care for the children that you serve. So what I'm going to do is talk today just a little bit about um, the child care space and furnishings um, to make your uh, center a quality center. And the first thing I want to talk about is the size of the center and the space, uh, sufficient space for a child care center. Uh, in Wisconsin, where I'm located, the requirement is 35 square feet per child. 35 square feet per child. That's not a lot of space. Um, so I really think that it probably should be a little bit more. So if you're opening a center, try to figure on having a little more space. And also, you're going to um, take away the space that you're using for items that are not movable. So your shelves and your cribs and things like that, you're going to uh, minus that space out. So whatever left that you have, you measure that space. Okay, And then um, natural lighting is a very big thing in child care. They like to see, and according to this tool, it's a good idea to have windows in the child care center that can be manipulated, um, that can be controlled. So you want to have windows and then you want to have blinds or curtains on those windows. Um, you want to be able to close them at nap time and open them up when the sun is out so the children can get um, a nice um, look at the outdoor area when they're inside. Also good ventilation. Um, it is best if you have windows that can be opened in the classroom. If not, if you have some type of fan or ventilating system, air conditioning system, that will work as well because you need fresh air continually going throughout the center um, so that it creates a healthy environment for children. And then sound absorb absorbing materials in the classroom, such as rugs, carpets. I always say that a good rule of thumb is to have two-thirds of the classroom um, carpeted or have rugs in about two-thirds of the classroom. Of course, you don't want to have rugs in an area where you're going to be eating or doing art um, projects and things like that. So um, aside from that, all the other spaces, most of the other spaces should be carpeted. Um, and then all items, and this may seem like a no-brainer, it may seem like common sense, but believe me, um, I've gone into centers where this is an issue. All items, materials, walls, floors should be clean and in good repair. So sometimes when centers are open for a while, they don't notice things, and sometimes it takes a fresh eye, someone freshly coming into the program to take a look at what is actually going on there, and you may see a chair that's wobbly that needs to be taken out. There may be um, a broken item, a toy item that needs to be removed. There may be a hole in the wall or in the floor that needs to be taken care of. So just making sure that you have your teachers in the classroom pay close attention to that and to make sure to report anything that may not be uh, repaired properly or in disrepair and remove it immediately from the classroom. And then regard to furnishings for routine care, play, and learning. Um, when you're out and you're purchasing items for your child care program, tables and chairs, we know that to buy children's um, tables and chairs, but sometimes we put the preschool chairs and tables in the toddler room. And so we have to make sure that it's scaled to the size of the child in that particular age group. So a rule of thumb is that the child should be able to sit in the chair comfortably with their back to the chair and their feet should be able to be planted securely on the floor. And also their elbows should be able to fit on the table. Um, 
and their knees should fit securely underneath the table. Okay, so that's the rule of thumb. So have them sit down and make sure that they are able to sit comfortably in the chair. Um, their knees are uh, comfortably under the chair. Their feet are planted securely and flatly on the floor and they're able to get their elbows on the table. And that's how you'll know if that is suited for that age group. Also, cubby spaces, and I had someone ask questions about this. The cubby spaces where children keep their materials, um, their art supplies, their um, clothing, extra clothing, um, coat and all that, it should be inside of the classroom. These items should be inside of the classroom, not outside of the classroom. And the reason for that is that it becomes a um, supervision problem if it's outside of the classroom. Because we are constantly sending children in and out of the classroom um, to go put things in their cubbies, to go get things out of their cubby. And the time that they're out of the classroom is time that we don't see them. We can't supervise them. We don't know what's going on. And we don't ever want to have a child in, in our program or in our super, under our supervision and we don't see them. We need to be able to see them at all times. So we want the cubby spaces to be inside of the classroom. And also regarding shelves and toys in the classroom, your shelves should be scaled to the size of the child as well. Everyone should be able to securely and um, comfortably take toys off of the shelf. So if you have a toddler classroom, those shelves should be a little lower than it would be in, say, a preschool or a kindergarten classroom. You can't use the same, same shelving for all of the child care areas because you want the child to be able to securely get things off of the shelf without having things tumble on top of them. Also, items that are not accessible to children that are on high shelves that the teacher has to get for them is not counted. Those are not counted as items that are accessible to children. So if there's something that's on a high shelf, we don't count that as being accessible to children if the teacher has to go and get the item off of the shelf every time for the child. So I know art supplies and things like that, we keep those on shelves out of the reach of children, um, but we can't really count that as accessible to children if it's not where they can take it whenever they need it. So next week we're going to talk about furnishings for relaxation, comfort, and comfort. Uh, because this is very important in child care programs that they have a space that is comfortable aside from other children where they can relax and they can get away from the hustle and bustle of the classroom if they need to steal away for a moment and collect themselves or just want some time to themselves. So we're going to talk about um, what's needed and what's required in that space as well. So thank you so much for um, visiting me today and again I want to give our website um, we do offer online child care training we do consulting services within our state Wisconsin but our continuing education is online and available and approved by many states so I want you to see that and the hearts there and also again I want to promote the Perry Girl community perrygirls.com um, so um, if you want support and love from the community, um, go ahead and join that community and see how that works out for you. So again, my name is Tina Oliver. Thank you so much for joining me this morning, and I look forward to seeing you on the next scope. Bye-bye.